Bonnui. I look like this for a reason. <laughs> but I realized that I'm not gonna hide it and I'm not gonna procrastinate. I'm just gonna do the job anyway. And funny enough, I'm doing my own shadow integration and it's not pretty. But today is surprisingly the day when we talk about integration. So let's see how that went down. All right, don't try this at home. <sighs> the reversal of integrity shows itself as pettiness in the face of ease. Honestly, I should have said it shows itself as shame in the face of transparency. All right. I, I don't like any part of this story. I was dressed as a beef eater guard. Yes. Freezing on the street. A chronic pain set in my shoulder propelled me to take the eighth and ninth paracetamol of the day. I can't say for sure, but there is a likelihood that I was also a bit drunk. I was supposed to be enticing tourists into this gift shop by making a fool of myself and posing for pictures all day long. I barely had enough money for food. I was counting pennies and choosing the bottom shelf cheapest items. According to my Instagram, I looked happy. He threw his jacket on the table in the break room and left. I heard the handful of change in the coat pocket hitting the table. Done it before for way smaller reasons, for fun, out of boredom, to feel powerful, on a dare. A fleeting voice in my head went, I'm done with being that person. I'm better than a thief. And I did it anyway. I went through his jacket and pocketed just the right amount of coins. He wouldn't even notice. And I had enough to cover my bus ride home. Okay. A heart thumping few minutes later, he returned with a box of donuts, grabbed his coat, and pushed the box in front of me. You want one? You know, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, my mother technically raised me to be a petty thief. She taught me how to shoplift. And for some strange reason, it was a real moral victory for her when she could nick something and didn't have to pay for it. So I, I could just say that I grew up with a very messed up moral compass and it was quite challenging for me to differentiate what's okay and what's not okay. But actually somewhere deep down inside, I could always feel what's right. It was just not the surroundings that I tried to fit into. Everything around me seemed to have a, a different sense of what's okay and what's not okay in the whole country. And I haven't said much about what we're going to do in, um, I'm blanking the name, Ultimate Desire, because I have vague ideas. What I've done in the past year-ish is that I've gathered so much information, raw data, tools, techniques, tips, tricks, and I realized that I, I personally went through all of them at a ridiculously fast pace. <laughs> and now it's all coming down. And it, it really is personal to everyone what works and what doesn't work. And for me, one of the most profound things, and if you guys are interested in it, but that's totally a group decision and a personal decision as well. If you guys are interested in it, then we are going to meet a group of beings who have been working with you personally they are your personal team because if you are on this planet at this time and if you feel like that you are supposed to be doing something more than what you're doing right now it's a surefire sign 
that you have been prepping for this life, which means that because it's very normal in other places to work in teams and to trust and respect each other, because the whole point of integrity is the foundation of solid trust and respect. It's very likely that you have your own team who you've been prepping with for this specific incarnation. And when you get to meet that team, for me, it was such a profound experience that when you are in the presence of beings, when you feel the presence of beings who are incredibly pure and innocent, full on transparency, they can not just see through you, they can feel and know exactly how you are and who you are. They can just read your energy. I felt incredibly shameful. I felt like I'm dirty in every sense of the word. I felt like I've done so many things that I could only get away with because I thought that I'm a good enough liar or a good enough thief or a good enough whatever cheater. And if I would have been completely transparent or if we would live in circumstances where people could actually see right through you fully transparently, I probably wouldn't have done those things. And I'm not blaming it on culture. I'm not blaming it on the environment. I'm not blaming it on circumstances because I was the one who was doing all those things. But it is a factor that if collectively we would have set up different rules for the game, it wouldn't have even crossed my mind because when I sat in front of those beings who just palpably saw and felt and knew everything that I was and everything that I am, there was nothing to hide. And I wasn't afraid. I wasn't feeling like I'm going to be punished. There's no sense of morality. It's just, incre for me, it was incredibly shameful and guilty to live with the conscience that I've done things that I don't want to be transparent about. And now, Exhibit A, hello gorgeous, perfect Exhibit A, this is what's coming out today. Strangely, I'm going through this shadow integration in a, a weird sequence for myself as well. I literally couldn't stop myself from crying today for the entire day. And the weirdest thing is that what, what really gets me going is kindness and innocence. When I see I love you too, so much. When I see kindness and when I see innocence, it gets me immediately. There is a part of me who wants to return to that innocence so bad, so much. And so when I was in the presence of those beings who come from just a different vibration, just a different resonance, imagine beings who don't have to eat, don't have to consume anything else. And yeah, sure, it's really cool that they can demanifest and remanifest and live as a conscious cloud and all the perks. But the real thing is that they don't have it in their consciousness, kindness indeed. They don't have anything in their consciousness that would even attempt to hurt another being because they can feel it just as much. We're not hiding from each other. We're really not that good liars. Not none of us, just collectively. None of us are good liars. We just kind of have this social agreement that, yeah, weather is nice today. Yeah, right. Yeah, there is weather today. Yeah, everything's fine. Good. Okay, bye. And we cap our conversations at that level. We cap our engagement at that level. And um, so if you guys are interested in it, we're going to meet a, a team of beings like that. And funniest thing, I mean, 
for the past few days I'm just letting it come out it's just yeah it's it's in there all the shame all the guilt all the sadness all the anger frustration just let it leave the system before I move back to a place where I don't have this sunshine and the sea every day I'm like it's, this is a better place to let that all out but if um, if you guys are interested we're going to meet your team your personal team and for me it it works like they can heal just by touch just by literally being themselves and loving each other and circulating love in between them and you just get caught in the middle of that just that pure innocent love so sometimes I just call in those beings and it immediately it's physically palpably stabilizes my field when at that beginning I mean you know I'm, I'm a veteran at crying and the beginning stages when that crying that shaking finds you immediately I'm just like I love doesn't hurt what I'm feeling right now that's not pure it's not love and it's not necessarily mine I'm housing it but this is not love and immediately those beings come and it's, it's like they are just hugging you from every angle and they physically palpably help stabilizing your field it's an incredible feeling I'm like there's nothing human that I can compare it to and a part of me just goes yeah well that's just your imagination that's just your willingness to change or your desire to feel something else or your just emotional imagination but um i i have dealt with depression for long enough to know the difference between actually feeling good and uh, just getting too tired from crying and just not giving a fuck anymore and just hiding and pretending that you're feeling good so it's it's a profound experience when you do get to meet beings who still carry that purity that pure energy not just the consciousness itself the fact that they have the consciousness it's chicken and egg it enables them to emit different frequencies transmit different frequencies so it's like if you've ever had energy healing and you felt worse after that it's a very real thing <laughs> bring them on camera i wish <laughs> to defy entropy i would i would really love to i'm, I'm really training to be able to see again because seeing is one of those things for me that i'm like unless i can see it i don't believe it but i i feel it it's it's such a clear-cut difference so um, when, when I'm in the presence of that purity, it's not imagination. I've tried to deal with my own biochemistry in many ways. Many of them did not work out, alcohol and drugs. But that pure distilled essence of love, trust, peace, incredible respect it's enabling me or reminding me of a state where there is no dichotomy there is no polarity it's just they manage to merge and find each other in the middle anywho I'm going to cap this mostly because today I've spent the entire day crying so I'm, I'm gonna sleep but I'm happy that you're here I'm happy that I'm still here and uh, tomorrow we're gonna do this again on Instagram love you so much and if you guys want to work together I'm getting more and more <laughs> confirmation biased about it reassured about it that it's the right next step for you know a very specific group of people I love your tears and I love you <laughs> But I'm, I'm sure that I will find the right people who this speaks to at this time of their lives that 
proper emotional integration where you get to feel your feelings and you get to have techniques to work through those feelings I find it really important because I've overloaded my mind my mental capacity with a bunch of information a bunch of data a bunch of wishes that I, I really wish that life would be like this but my relationships and my day-to-day -day life doesn't reflect it as such so now I'm learning how to feel again like a baby it's like that's what happens to you after 20 years of depression you literally have to learn how to feel because you just didn't want to anywho love you so much See you tomorrow.